Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include British people will be branded EU citizens from cradle to grave EU ranked as key priority for NSA monitoring The EU declares war on caravans planned for MOT style tests which will cost families hundreds of pounds British exports to countries outside of the EU soar to a record 80 billion pounds plus UK wages decline amongst worst in Europe. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. Before we begin with our first story, I would like to welcome you back to the Unit Nightly News. A huge amount has happened over the summer. The war crisis in Syria, the EU drone monitoring programme, further devastating fiscal decline in Greece, the very core of the EU has begun shaking. But we face an even bigger threat, and that is the threat to our freedom and our right to democracy. Looking at where we are, our situation is in crisis. Here in the UK, we find our democracy temporarily suspended. Why would I make such a statement? Well, the reality is that David Cameron has not been elected on majority into Parliament. He has achieved that position through coalition negotiation. Since taking office, he has failed to implement the will of the public in the UK. Whipping Parliament over the referendum question, whistled policy through Parliament and overseen William Hague's delinquent warmongering, and this with less than 10% of public support. The time has come, friends, for us to ramp up the action, and here at the unit we intend to do exactly that. Throughout this month, you can expect new and exciting improvements to our services, our website and the nightly news, and I shall be keeping you in the picture as we release these new developments. First up, of course, is the new look nightly news. I sincerely hope you enjoy the new format, and as always, we would be delighted to hear back from you with your thoughts and comments. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's news. First, from our front page. Eric Pickles, the local government secretary, fears that the European Union flag could replace the Royal Crescent on all the official documents within three years under EU regulations. The reality here is that this has been the objective all along, and by that I mean since the very first question over Europe, or as it was known, the common market back in 1972. Take a look at Foreign and Commonwealth Office Document 1048 in our 1972 et al section, and you will see that the objective has been all along to create a federal European superstate, of which national identities are replaced with the badge of European citizen. In this article, Eric Pickles goes on to talk about imposed EU law, which by very definition means that the EU law is demonstrating its supremacy over British laws, in essence rendering Westminster redundant. The European Union is ranked as a key priority in a list of spying targets for the US National Security Agency, German weekly Der Spiegel said on Saturday, citing a document leaked by former intelligence contractor Edward Snowden. The classified document, dated April 2013, states that the US Secret Services are especially interested in gathering intelligence concerning the 28-member bloc's foreign policy, international trade and economic stability. This article reveals the extent to which the United States has delved into snooping on its allies. Don't think that this sort of behaviour is restricted to the states. Here in the UK, GCHQ has been investing huge sums of our taxes in new data centres and is reported on record as already being able to inspect huge amounts of internet traffic and mobile communications. <laughs> the Orwellian nightmare from 1984 is already upon us. Holidaymakers are to be hit with bills for hundreds of pounds under European Union plans to impose MOT-style tests on caravans. Up to 200,000 families could be affected by the draconian demands, which it is warned could devastate the UK's tourist economy. The UK government is to launch an attempt to block the regulations, but it is feared it will be passed into law by Brussels later this year. 
The article goes on to say that investigations by the UK Caravan Club reported the Caravan Club actively supports and encourages measures designed to improve road safety, but has seen no EU evidence that MOT-style testing on caravans will do so. Here again, we see that the UK has little to no power to resist, and you can guarantee that the big corporations will be lobbying to make sure the legislation creates a business advantage for them. Britain's exports to countries outside the European Union have soared to a record high as demand around the world grows, official figures showed. The Office for National Statistics said exports rose 4.9% between April and June to a record £78.4 billion in a major boost to the recovering economy. These statistics meet with predictions that we have been making for almost two years. Indeed, Dr Eric Edmonds' audio interview talks about the growth of markets outside the Eurozone. And Ian Milne warned of the potential for a huge missed opportunity. The UK is in a financial mess. Our liabilities as a nation are enormous. It really is time we turned our attention to the Commonwealth and the wider world for trade and industry development. Let's face it, the bulk of Europe is bankrupt, as has been shown in the case of Greece. The bailouts don't work. The EU is going to hell in a handcart, and it's time we jumped off the cart. Wages in the UK have seen one of the largest falls in the European Union during the economic downturn, according to official figures. The figures which were requested by the Labour Party and collated by the House of Commons Library show average hourly wages have fallen 5.5% since mid-2010, adjusted for inflation. That is the fourth worst decline among the 27 EU nations. Meanwhile, of course, the Bruswellian kleptocrats are sunning themselves on the beaches of Trinidad and Tobago, quaffing cheese and wine whilst trying to figure out what the next line of bureau legalese to use to spin the next Bilderberg agenda item into reality. Today in our video library, following up on our video Betrayed, I thought we'd take a look again at one of the lead films in the InfoWars Paul Revere contest. Now, this video, thank you, Michelle, demonstrates the end result of state tyranny and gives an insight into the future we face here in Europe now that the lunatics have taken over the asylum. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.